Okay, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this is going to be focused on the Bastel Instruments Micro Granny. Uh, this will be a little bit different than my other tutorials because you can see we are starting in an open office spreadsheet and that sounds exciting, doesn't it? Uh, but you'll see why I'm here in a minute. Uh, the Micro Granny is a sampler that you can use to create new sounds with the microphone or the line input uh, and then mangle those sounds. You can also play back sounds from a micro SD card. Uh, it comes preloaded with uh, quite a few really interesting sounds and you can download other sounds from their website. Uh, it's now in version 2.5 uh, even though this says 2.0 I have the 2.5 version and um, I did get the orange one. I probably would not get the orange one again uh, because it's a little bit hard to read uh, in a live situation. I ended up taking some crayon to rub over the engraved lettering here and that helped somewhat uh, but just the way that this refracts light uh, while very interesting visually uh, it's just hard to read uh, so I'd probably get the black one if I had it to do again. Um, this is a very fun instrument. I've used this live a couple of times. Um, I use it as kind of an a way to give a sound, uh, just to create a bed of sound in between loading projects. Um, so if I'm doing something on the, the laptop and I don't want people to be focused on what I'm doing on the laptop, I'll create uh, a bed of sound with this in between sets. Um, initially I got this for playing samples back, uh, voice samples in a live context and while it does work for that um, the part that threw me and that made me move on to other devices is the sample management uh, for the micro granny so that's what I want to talk about here today and I'm gonna pull some stuff right from the manual uh, but the only thing I've done here is I've rearranged it to be a little bit more uh, understandable for me and to create a better flow for this video so the micro granny has uh, six sounds for each of the presets that you can save and uh, when you're saving a preset you can have all of the parameters that you've developed for that preset will get saved with it so for example uh, if I have a sample and I've adjusted the sample rate or the bit crush or anything there that will be saved with that sound um, and then there are ten banks of sounds that we can save so they're numbered zero to nine each of the big buttons, the square buttons here, has a what I'll call a slot or a, uh, a reserved file that can be used for recording. And uh, only the WAV files starting with a number are going to be ones that we can delete or overwrite. Uh, any of the other sounds, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, that start with a letter uh, aren't something that we can overwrite. So there's a bit of protection built in there. So the first character of the name of the sample refers to the bank, the second character refers to a big button and preset. So looking at these examples that they give us, we have preset 21 has reserved files for recording 20 to 25. Preset 22 has reserved files 26 to 2B. And this is where you might start scratching your head, where did this 2B come from? And uh, preset 23 has 2C to 2H. Now, because this is an Arduino-based project, um, one of the constraints is the file name conventions uh, within Arduino uh, and also just in terms of uh, trying to manage all of these files, keeping file names short for uh, response time. So that's one of the reasons they came up with this uh, algorithm for how they're going to name these files. So the rest of this is just informational, um, how to use the presets. This is all in the manual. Uh, but I did want to note here, one of the things that's in the manual that I found later to be not true is it noted here that you can rename and rearrange your presets on the computer. Um, that is not true from what I understand when I contacted Bastel. And if you look at these text files that uh, are actually the files that store the presets, they are just not something you could read, not something that you can edit. So that's just uh, a little thing to keep in mind there. But let's go back to our example. Uh, P21 has reserved files for recording 20 to 25. Well, what does that exactly mean? If we look at preset 21, for each of the buttons, 
So these are representing the buttons. We have a slot that's available to record in. And these are each wave files. And 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Um, as we go through the presets here, we're going to eventually run out of numbers to represent that slot with two digits. So that's why after 29, they're not going to go to 30 because 30 is actually going to represent down here a slot. We're going to need to go to 2A. And then using the alphabet, it goes from 2A, 2B, all the way down to 2Z. That pattern then is going to repeat for each one of the different um, banks that's available. And we said earlier we have 10 banks. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if we go down to the ninth bank, zip around here, uh, you'll have the same pattern. Bank 9, the first bank in, the, the in this series has these reserved wave files and then when we get over here, it starts to use the alphabet and goes all the way down to Z. Now, you can use this device without getting down in the details with this, um, certainly. But um, if you're going to manage your files um, and put pre-recorded content onto the device, um, it does help to really understand this. So I'm going to jump over to the other factor here and that is managing your pre-recorded sounds. Now the pre-recorded sounds that come with this are really great. Um, a few of them are very recognizable. Uh, certain people and um, melodic structures that I prefer not to use when I'm creating something new because that means that everybody with this, this device has those same samples. Uh, now if you mangle them beyond recognition, which is part of the fun, uh, that's fine. But I wanted to load up my own, uh, particularly voice samples uh, of things I've created. And um, what I found I had to do was I had to go through really a three-step process that took a lot of time. Uh, so I had my original file name, and these were typically WAV files. And uh, the first limitation that you have to be aware of is that you have to convert your files to either 8 or 16-bit mono, 22 kilohertz. It's actually 22.5, but anyway. Um, now, a, a sample rate conversion is very simple using pretty much any um, audio tool that's out there, whether you're using Adobe Audition like I do or Audacity. Uh, any number of, of tools are out there that can do that. Um, and also, you know, the mono and all that kind of stuff is built in. There's scripts that you can create for batch renaming and batch um, conversion. Um, but it's the renaming that really throws me for a loop with this because um, there aren't a lot of tools that do the renaming in the fashion that you need for this. And uh, now I use typically ad Adobe Bridge to do rename, uh, batch renaming. And uh, it did not have all of the features needed, even with some of the uh, scripting that was available there, to do what I needed to do. So I ended up finding a th another th third-party tool, uh, which I'll have to link down in the comments. I don't have it right in front of me right now. Uh, but I had to take my files from my Mac over to my PC use the tool that I found that was working on the PC, do all my renaming, bring those files back on to the SD card, and then bring those into the microgranny. And uh, it's something that I would not want to do on a regular basis. I would probably do it once every six months if I was really reliant on the device. Um, but when it really came down to it, after the first experience, I decided that I would I would move on to a different tool for the purpose that I had of, of playing back voice samples. So this is something that um, is a little down in the weeds, um, but is something worth looking into if you're looking at this device. Um, if you have questions, uh, please put them in the comments. I will put a note there to the, um, or a link there to the tool that I used for renaming, uh, because that took some research to locate. But uh, that is the micro granny. Again, a very fun instrument, but um, takes some getting used to in terms of the management of the samples. Uh, if you're not interested in getting in the weeds on that, it's still a lot of fun. 
and uh, really great uh, Arduino project. You can get this as a kit, um, and you can build it and maybe even customize it a bit. I wanted to get rolling with it right away, so I brought I bought the uh, pre-built instrument. But uh, very cool uh, tool, and thanks for watching.